Hi, Bob. Hi, Mel. Mm, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. good. How about you? I'm doing well also. Excited for your upcoming training. Uh, that's going to happen in July. Me too. I love working for IFSCA. Mm, we love having you. This training is going to be about the intersection of healing trauma and spirit and how the two of them need to go together to deeply heal from major trauma. So we're going to talk about how we can't deeply heal from major trauma without some sort of spiritual connection. And many folks will disagree with this vast rotation, and some will accept that it can at least be helpful. So in this class, we will explore how the major traumas, which can shake us to our foundation, also call for a response of similar depth. Treading in these waters can make a therapist uncomfortable and uncertain, so bringing up our therapist parts. And working as a, as a therapist at this depth can shake us to our own foundation and cause us to question our orientation in the world. If you've worked with Bob or seen or read Bob's work, you may know that Bob often refers to this as the farther reaches of IFS and beyond. This class will be in this spirit. Bob wants to connect the relatively small world of IFS and psychotherapy to a larger universe of creating meaning in the face of devastating trauma, betrayal, and evil. Knowing that the most horrendous things can happen to people and sitting with people who have been shattered, how do we go on? How then do we live? How can we find meaning and even joy in this world? We need a larger framework to do this. And we will explore ways we can get bigger so that our compassion grows large enough to hold all of this for ourselves and for our clients and even possibly for humanity. Great workshop. <laughs> <laughs> So on that note, Bob, tell us a little bit more about what you're really going to dive into and what um, participants can expect in July. Um, well, I'm going to talk about my own history, which was big T trauma mm -hmm. and, and how I connected and failed to connect with spirit in the aftermath. Mm -hmm. um, I noticed several times I talked about foundations being shaken. And that, that actually comes from a, one of my favorite quotes. It's from a female Cherokee shaman. And she said, our foundations are ripped out from under us over and over and over again until the abyss itself becomes our foundation. Mm -hmm. And my wild dream for this workshop is people would become comfortable standing on the abyss and and facing those just unbelievable horrendous tragedies that happen to people over and over again and finding when we do that we're forced to call on deep resources within ourselves mm -hmm. or we can't do it yeah. you know so it's it's one of those incredibly well disguised blessings i think one of the biggest pieces that you named is when we're sitting with folks whose foundations have been shattered over and over and over again, the immense amount of self energy that we need to be able to curate or to hold the container. Like I sometimes talk about this like self-led bubble that we hold for clients that when they're going to the depths of their trauma, it really makes sense to my system that we need to uh, lean into something bigger in us so that we can hold that space big enough for them to be able to heal at the depths that they really need to heal. Yep, exactly. Mm -hmm. And I think these clients help us get big like that. One of, the, one of the things Dick and I used to argue about a little bit is he would say, self never cries. And I said, well, when I'm in a lot of self, there are usually tears pouring down my face. Mm -hmm. And I think, I don't know what he's saying, more recently, but I think he's sort of agreeing with that more and more. Mm -hmm. The kind of self presence I need to be in with people like this often weeps mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. weeps profound ancient tears. Yeah. And I actually, there's an idea from that I will be talking about that Pia Melody expressed really well. She said one of the great markers of spirituality is the presence of opposite emotions simultaneously, mm -hmm. most often joy and pain together. Mm -hmm. the, the, and I think 
for so many of us and so many of our clients, there is no opening to spirituality because it's all sort of, you know, oh, that, that low class garbage over there. We don't do that. Us educated people don't do that stuff. Mm -hmm. But so it's very, and one way I found that almost everyone can access spirituality is I just ask them, think of a time when you've seen something or heard something so beautiful, it brought tears to your eyes. That for many people, that's a good opening. I think there's, there's legacy burdens that hold this. Not long ago, I worked with a Circassian woman. People have forgotten who the Circassians were, mostly. Mm -hmm. They were an ethnic group in the, the eastern end of the Black Sea. There were about five, six million of them. And the Russians decided to wipe them out, starting in about 1815. And they were almost completely wiped out by about 1860. The legacy burden and the pain that woman held in her was immense and centuries old. To deal with things like that in a way that's not just turning away and pretend, you know, ignoring it, you really have to be able to open to these depths in yourself. Yeah, yeah. And even speaking about legacy burdens, I imagine that on the other side of that, that some of us might have to do some legacy work around not being open to spirit or spirituality of different oh. messages that we've grown up grown up with oh yeah yeah you could say that about 10 times mel <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah we're not we're told it's bad and wrong i have not yet discovered an upper limit to the amount of self mm -hmm. that you that you can have you know dick is now saying that it's it's both a particle inside of you and a field mm -hmm. and you can access this field as people start to do that more and more, I don't see any upper limit to that. Almost everybody comes across times when they're challenged. The normal life things of sitting with a parent as they die, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or maybe watching your child have a life-threatening illness, mm -hmm. or I mean, there's so many. <laughs> everybody has, has this kind of depth mm -hmm. offered to them or thrust at them or you know, and I'm, I think our culture in, of all the cultures ever and throughout history is one of the worst at offering resources to, mm -hmm. to deal at this kind of level. Mm -hmm. I just put together this new book, which is a book of quotes that are trying to help make this bridge between psychotherapeutic healing and spirit. So I'll probably be bringing in a lot of those quotes. I, mm -hmm. I like using quotes. They can often be like, a seed you drop in a pond and it sends out ripples. This, this won't be providing answers, this will more be asking questions. Mm -hmm. So more inner exploration of what comes up for folks when we're uh, uh, sitting across from clients like this? Yeah. And more opening rather than, oh, we've got closure here, this one's solved, let's move oh, on. Right. Oh, this, yep. is like, <laughs> this is like, no, hopefully at the end of the workshop, You'll, you'll feel bigger, more expanded with more questions, not less. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Good. All right.